On December 7th, 1941, Japan struck first and declared war afterwards. Costly to our Navy was the loss of war vessels, but more costly to Japan was the effectiveness of its foul attack in immediately unifying America in its determination to fight and win the war thrust upon it and to win the peace that will follow. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the whole world uh, erupted. Our whole country was going to war, a world war. A world war too did unite this country. Everyone was, was totally involved in supporting our troops. When the war was starting and we had a paved runway, you know, it, it brought a lot of activity here and everybody figured, well, the, the Army's gonna move in. Well, all of a sudden the Navy blew into town overnight. Within a year after Pearl Harbor, the Navy had already come into Vero Beach and it was now the uh, Vero Beach Naval Air Station. Well, when I came to Vero, when I first saw it, I was ready to get on the train and go back to where I came from. There were more people at the air base than there were in the whole town. The United States was not used to being in war, and so the planes that they had for the uh, young men to train on were very old planes or very new planes, and sometimes it didn't go so well. Well, I lived on Storm Grove, and uh, the Navy planes were going over constantly. A number of times, I remember riding around at night with my father, there would be a, one of the planes would crash, and the Navy would drop these flares on parachutes, and they would set the woods on fire so that they could look for the, the crashed airplanes. Uh, one Buccaneer SB-2A crashed just north of Storm Grove. And I remember running through the woods and seeing the plane sitting there and uh, uh, the pilot was standing there and the, the plane was uh, in one piece except for the engine which was laying off uh, to the side because it, it threw the engine. But he wasn't hurt. But there's a second crash near the grove which has stuck with me a lot more and that was this hell diver uh, lost power and did a beautiful belly landing. Uh, he hit a big pine stump that you couldn't see it was there. The pilot and his gunner uh, didn't get out of the airplane. They, they perished right there. Would have been a, a routine crash landing except for that big stump they hit. And uh, it was such a sad tale, but that one's really vivid in my mind. There was all different types of planes out there, and there were all different types of uh, pilots that were being trained. And one of the most uh, important part was the night fighters. My husband-to-be was training here for three months. He did have a story that while strafing for submarines right offshore, the altimeter said he had like a thousand feet, but all of a sudden he hits the water and he had on his May West and it inflated. He also had a, a little blow up dinghy type thing with wooden paddles that because the planes couldn't see him, he could see them and he got so frustrated he took his wooden paddles and paddled to shore. The plane went down very near what today is JC Beach. Their main purpose at Vero Beach Naval Air Station was to train for uh, dive bombing and they went out into Blue Cypress Lake and built these big wooden platforms and they carried these small practice bombs with a, a shotgun shell affair in the nose of it and then the back was full of flour, something, something white. And if the bomb hit the target, which would blow the white powder out the back of this little bomb and leave a big white spot on the, on the target, there were I guess thousands of them on the bottom of Blue Cypress Lake, probably still thousands of them there. Vera Beach had one of these training programs for photography, and it was very important to the war effort. Well, I was trained to be an aerial photographer here in Vero. In fact, I made a aerial map of Vero Beach. After we got through flying our mission over Vero Beach, they were sent to Washington. 
aerial photography being a new uh, state of the art during World War II, uh, this had never been done before and it was such an advantage. In World War II, the women did not get the credit that they deserved for the war effort. They were the ones behind the scenes. They were the ones who made things run smoothly as these men had to, to train to go off to fight the battles. There were no exceptions here in Vero either because we had both the men and the women that worked at the Naval Air Station. The public didn't know a whole lot about what was going on. It, the, the government couldn't afford to tell everybody, but uh, Vero Beach uh, played a major role uh, in the war effort and uh, when it was all over then you look back and say I didn't really realize what was going on up here. All our training was right here. Vero Beach has been a special place. This is where I spent most of my Navy life right here in Vero. As we look back over the war years we realize how very important it was for small communities and, and small areas like Vero Beach that trained these young men and women that went off to war and won the war, how very important it was for us and, and the future of our great nation.